This is Greg from the PrepperStop.com or ForbiddenKnowledge.info. This might be the most controversial video that I've put on here recently uh, dealing with radiation because of, I do specialize in radiation. For those of you who don't know, I am really the only one in the country who travels to trade shows all around the country and does talks and presents equipment and has knowledge about radiation detection. Really, we don't have much more uh, in our world today. Back in the days of civil defense, when I was a kid, uh, we had a little bit of a program to help protect us from radiation in case we were attacked by uh, the, the Soviet Union at the time. But all you younger crowd out there don't have to worry about a thing because you have FEMA today. They'll take care of everything. They'll give you a nice fallout trailer to live in. That's right. Dream on. Uh, if they run out of trailers, uh, if, and the trailers, you know, you might die from the formaldehyde first. You know, if, if you, you might die from formaldehyde before you die from, die from radiation. Uh, poisoning, um, and if they run out of trailers, they have camps for you. But here's my take, and a lot of you are going to be hopping mad over this because you've listened to Alex Jones, Jeff Frentz, Steve Quayle, uh, Pastor Paul Begley, you listened to Coast to Coast Radio, you listened to ENE News, you've listened to all these liars out there who are telling you you're all going to die because of Fukushima. Well, it's just not true. In fact, I don't believe you'd expect to believe anything. I don't expect you to believe anything I'm saying because you won't believe it anyway. Until you go and research it yourself, you're going to have to go. All you really have to do, here's all you have to do. Find out how radiation travels. That's all you got to do. But all these clowns don't want to do that. They just want to repeat something, something, something that's said on the Internet and pretend it's real and they're all going to die. And the fear mongering. Here's a little story. I used to appear when the Fukushima disaster happened. Uh, I was in high demand to be on a lot of these radio shows and programs. Um, I appeared once, didn't reappear again, because they didn't like my message. I didn't have the fear they wanted. And more than likely, they were selling some kind of product along with that fear. And I don't do that. I tell the truth. The truth is bad enough. We don't need all the lies thrown in with it. Now, here's my take about Japan. You aren't going to like this, most of you. Some of you will, some of you won't. Anybody that's interested in the truth will need to research this. Um, I knew when it happened that I would not have to worry uh, here in the several states uh, about being exposed to radiation from Fukushima, uh, from the J Japanese power plant that had a disaster in 2011. I didn't worry about it because I knew it wasn't really possible for the radiation to get here, you see. That's right. It's not really possible for the radiation to get here. Certainly not in any kind of measurable amount that you could measure with either a Geiger counter, survey meter, or anything else. Uh, I remember appearing on some of these shows and somebody would call in Oh, I've got a Model 717, and it's reading, you know, three micro, three, three Renkins, and so on, and so on. I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that, because you're going to be dead pretty soon. And the fact of the matter, he just didn't know what he was doing. He, he, there's, there's only four, four answers. To when that happens, there's only four possibilities. Either the equipment is defective, or the operator is not trained on the equipment, doesn't know what he's looking at. Uh, third possibility is you're lying, or the fourth possibility is maybe there's something going on radiologically local, that's causing those needles to do that, but it's not because of Fukushima. Because what he was reading out of Model 717 is high-level gamma, and gamma doesn't travel around the Earth. You see, this is the Earth. Japan. Gamma rays travel in a straight line, and they're blocked by mass. So the gamma rays do not come around the Earth. Pretty simple as that. The high-level gamma will just not be existent anywhere except basically close enough to where you can see the power plant. Uh, Tokyo, on the other side of those mountains, no gamma rays, period. None. End of story. So what he was reading on a 717, which can only detect ga gamma, I knew was bogus. And I saw all kinds of reports about that. Go to ForbiddenKnowledge.info, by the way. I have a radiation page which talks about all this stuff. Okay, so gamma is out. Now, there could be some beta particles that are gamma emitters. That's another story we're going to go into now. So what is beta radiation? Beta radiation travels, uh, I'm sorry, attaches to a piece of dust or dirt. That dust or dirt goes up in the atmosphere, and then the winds carry it, and eventually comes down to the earth is what we call fallout. Okay? Anytime you hear the word fallout, you're talking about beta radiation. Beta radiation isn't anywhere near as dangerous as gamma. Gamma could kill you pretty quickly. Beta radiation can still kill you, but you need more of it, a longer exposure time, and it's not as dangerous. We weren't worried about beta radiation for the civil defense program nearly as much as we were with gamma rays. So beta radiation. So, okay, so that's how it's getting here, right? It's going up in the air, and it's coming, it's dropping off the coast of California and nowhere else. Wrong. Think about this, folks. Beta particles, okay, this is some of the heaviest particles known to man. They'll tend to drop out of the sky a whole lot quicker than, than other particles, for one thing. Secondly, how are you going to get that beta particle all the way into the jet stream in order for it to travel any kind of distance whatsoever? You see, 
they'll tend to drop out of the atmosphere pretty quickly, and you need some kind of a major event to send those beta particles all the way in the jet stream in order for them to travel any kind of distance. Well, was there a mushroom cloud? I don't remember seeing a mushroom cloud. I remember seeing some hydrogenic explosions, which they said at the time, whether it's true or not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not concerned, that there are hydrogen explosions, there was no radiation in those hydrogen explosions. Well, even if, they, if there was radiation in those hydrogen explosions, they weren't large enough to send the beta particles all the way into the jet stream. You look, look at the videos, 100 foot, 200 feet tops. Uh, how far is the jet stream? A lot higher than that. Well, so how do you get these beta particles to come here all the, onto the coast of California? And by the way, going over Alaska and Hawaii, nobody talks about Alaska and Hawaii, which are a lot closer than California, but no, sometime they're going, somehow they're going up in, the, up in the atmosphere, getting all the way in jet stream somehow. They're traveling in jet stream, and then, oh, here comes California, whoop, right on the beach, right? That's what everybody's led to believe. Just not true. It's just not true, folks. Do some research. Quit listening to the fear mongers that are lying to you. I know I'm going to get a lot of negative comments on the thread down here, but this is this you have to research it yourself and put this in perspective. A lot of you might be remembered old enough to remember World War Three. Oh, three, three, yeah, I said three. World War Three. Remember World War Three? We nuked ourselves. The Soviets nuked themselves. The British, the French, the Chinese. There were nuclear bombs going off all over the world, hundreds of them, above ground. Those beta particles were possibly getting into the jet stream, mushroom clouds. Blame Harley was getting in the jet stream. Well, how come we're all not dead then? Hmm. Those beta particles stay aloft for a while, but in, a in actuality, they didn't stay aloft very long. In fact, if you look at all the results of the testing uh, and, the, and the, the papers written about it later, basically, unless you lived uh, within 20 miles or so, 20 or 30 miles, and the wind happened to shift because they were very careful about which way the winds were going, but there were some that went astray and contaminated areas that weren't meant to be contaminated. Um, and basically, only... 20 to 30 miles from the source were really that affected to me, any kind of measure, measurable at all. So put this in perspective, folks. You're, you're worried about something that's basically a non-issue here. Now, I'm talking about the several states. If, if you live in Japan, well, that's a different story. You may have a problem. If you're living in Tokyo, I don't think you have a problem. The mountains block the, the gamma rays, and the prevailing winds are taking all the beta particles off into the ocean. Okay, now let's talk about the ocean, because you're saying, oh, well, because these death plumes that were supposedly coming here from Japan didn't seem to materialize, well, okay, now it's coming in the ocean. It's in the water. All the water's leaking out. We've got millions of gallons going in the ocean. Okay, same idea, folks. Beta particles in the water leaking in the ocean, whether the reports are true or not, it doesn't matter much to me. Um, those beta particles are going into the ocean, and they tend to sink to the bottom just like any other dirt and silt particles. Uh, and even if they did stay aloft and floating around in the water and traveling thousands of miles to the coast of California where you're supposedly measuring them, well, the water is so diluted by then with other water that there's, it's so diluted you can't even measure it, even if it did. And they say, oh, well, all that debris coming over here, it took a year to get here, and the debris floated out before the power plants melted down, first of all, and a year's worth of wind and sun and rain and waves uh, action upon that debris would have knocked off any beta particles off those long time ago, unless there's trap pockets and water debris collected into the trap pockets and it made it all waited over to California to, to, to disturb your dinner. No, not likely whatsoever. No radiation found in any of the debris coming over here. You all keep inventing excuses to think we're all dying from radiation from Japan. No, I'm not saying it's not a problem. They have a problem over there, big problem. They had a problem. They still have a problem, apparently. And here's the point. It could have happened here. We still need to be prepared. How prepared are you? Probably not. You believe it's not survivable, you're just going to bend over and kiss your butt goodbye, right? While you're down under the desk. Well, those people are going to wake up the next day, find out they're still alive, and not have any idea what to do in a real emergency. And I'm not talking about Japan. We're all downwind of a nuclear power plant somewhere. How far downwind are you? Do you know what to do? How prepared are you? Probably not very. So the contamination now, supposedly all these death plumes coming in the ocean, these death currents, it's going to destroy all the oceans, right? And all, destroy all mammals and, and life in the oceans. Well, as I've pointed out before on one of these videos, one of the legitimate reports I heard, bluefin tuna found off the coast of California, found to have radioactive cesium in the fish, which they said could only be attributed to the nuclear power plant disaster in Fukushima. Oh, well, there you, there you go, right? This proves me, well... Read the whole report instead of reading the fear-mongering headlines. What it said was the levels of radiation found in that bluefin tuna, assuming they've migrated 
to the coast of California from Japan, which I have been told by some commercial fishermen I, I talked to that it's possible. They do. They go all the way around the world in like a year or something. And so it could have happened. Uh, and, but the levels of radiation found in that bluefin tuna were 30 times magnitude lower than the normal background radiation of the fish to begin with. Hmm. So all you people that ran out and bought Geiger counters because you're afraid to eat things because of contamination, you can't measure anything lower than background radiation with a Geiger counter. Sorry, Charlie. Can't be done. So 30 times magnitude lower than background radiation. Hmm, and that's contaminated. Well, that's about the equivalent of eating 1 20th of a banana. Better stop eating bananas. In fact, you better really stop eating Brazil nuts because they're even more radioactive than bananas are. The potassium in bananas and the radium in Brazil nuts. Hmm. I'm trying to put things in perspective here, folks. I'm not fearful of Japan. I don't live in Japan. I don't live in Alaska and Hawaii or California. Even if I did, I wouldn't be worried in those locales either. If you go to ForbiddenKnowledge.info, I have a radiation page which talks about all this. And I have live radiation readings on the site that are there all the time. That uh, basically it's every updated every 15 minutes one of the sites. And you can scroll around and look at Japan. You can scroll around and look at New Jersey and California. Huh, it's all the same. Huh, how come that is? I thought we were supposed to all be dying of radiation by now. Well, the fear mongers have a ball with this sort of thing. And I'm trying to cut through the crap and tell the truth to people for a change. But nobody wants to believe the truth. They want to be believe the fear, the scare, that we're all going to die. Well, we're all going to die someday. But it's not because of Japan. Unless I'm, unless I'm right there at Japan, and, and at the power plant, I'm not concerned, essentially. Or live off into the ocean, uh, some 10, 20 miles off the plant, uh, on the water. Now, the winds can shift, and that's a point, too, which could actually happen. Uh, you could actually have other uh, methods, uh, depending on uh, which direction the wind's blowing and what the weather's doing, there could be different uh, levels of contamination. So I just want to put all that in perspective for you. I could go on and on, but I'm trying to keep this video rather short, try to prove my main points because I'm tired of all the fear-mongering. I go to lectures all around the country and I talk about this and people don't like my message overall because it doesn't fall into play with the, uh, the fear-mongers. They, they want to believe the worst. Not everything is a conspiracy. Maybe they don't, aren't talking about it because it's not really an issue. But no, it's got to be a government cover-up because they're not talking about it. Well, maybe because there's nothing to talk about, essentially. They have a problem over there. If the reports are true, they still have a problem over there. I don't deny that. And again, that could have happened here. Now, here's the biggest danger of all. For all you fearful of that, you're going to love this. And I don't try to make, put fear into people about this because I'm not really fearful about radiation overall. But here's the danger that nobody in the country essentially is talking about. Newt Gingrich talks a little bit about the grid going down from EMP, but here's one thing that isn't mentioned. For those of you who are just new to this, electromagnetic pulse. Uh, can uh, if, if we get one, uh, well, when we get one, let's say man-made or natural. A natural one would be called a mass corona ejection. It would be a, what they call a solar flare, um, a plasma wave coming from the sun that happens naturally all the time. And when we get one to the magnitude we had in 1859, called the Carrington event, it's going to take the grid down. Now, I didn't say, notice I didn't say if it happens. I said when it happens. I think I said when it happens. Um, because it will happen. It's a mathematical certainty it will happen. When that happens, the grid's going to go down. Okay, so the grid's going to go down. Well, if you think about it, folks, anybody who's in preparedness, you'll know that that scenario basically puts into play every doomsday scenario you've ever heard about. Rioting, no food, no water, uh, people shooting at each other, economic collapse. Almost any, uh, any, any doomsday scenario you've ever heard of will be happening when that happens, when the grid goes down. But here's the part that nobody's talking about. When the grid goes down, the nuclear power plants also go down. They shut down automatically. They do what they call scram mode. They, they go down automatically safely. They shut down safely by themselves. No problem, right? Well, unfortunately, as Japan taught us, what destroyed that plant was not the earthquake or tsunami. It was the loss of power to the pumps. They couldn't keep that water circulating to keep the rods cool. That's really what happened in a nutshell. Now, the earthquake and tsunami set off a chain of events which have made that happen, but the point is they couldn't keep those pumps running. When the grid goes down, here in this country, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission requires an 8-hour battery backup and about a 72-hour generator backup. That's required. Well, by my math, that's not even quite four days, and so the grid's going to be down for a year. Hmm, let me think here. That's a few days shy of being able to keep those pumps running, uh, assuming 
maybe they have more fuel than four days worth. Uh, maybe the military, which will be so crippled, maybe the military can get fuel to those plants to keep them cooling down. And most nuclear power plants, you can't just shut it off like that. It's a gradual thing. It takes months to shut down to a cold state where you no longer have to pump the water for the pumps to keep them running. So, uh, And they can't generate power for themselves using nuclear fuel. They're, they're automatically shut down by themselves when the grid goes down. They need to sync up to that 60 hertz cycle of the grid. They can't stay running uh, independently and power themselves, you see. Their only hope is generators, which, <clears throat> which, by the way, the generators might actually be shorted out by the EMP, the fine coils, windings of the generators themselves. If they're, if they're computer controlled, they will be fried. Any computer will be fried. Even some that might be hardened might not stand, withstand this pulse because the pulse is actually a surge. When you're talking about the event from the sun, we're talking about a long surge. In 1859, the telegraph lines, which is the only technology we had of the day, a two-wire system, the telegraph lines were smoking. The paper caught fire in the machines, the shock the operators, they had to disconnect the machines from the, from the wires. In the case of a man-made EMP, it will be a really, really brief, high-intense burst, which will also destroy computers, but it won't be such a long surge as the solar flare goes. But either scenario, whether you believe it's man, whether we're going to be attacked by a terrorist with an EMP weapon or a nuclear device, it doesn't matter. The sun will do it for us someday anyway. So you want to talk about a scenario, you've got now 100 nuclear power plants possibly melting down in this country, the United States, and about 700 worldwide. And you're worried about Japan. Just wait, folks. Wait till that happens. And I said wait till it happens because it will happen. Again, it's a mathematical certainty. So this must be the most important information I've ever done on any of these videos. A lot of you will choose not to believe it, but those are the ones that want to stick your head in the sand and believe everything's okay and FEMA will take care of you. Good luck with that. Uh, I'm trying to get the truth out there. I'm trying to get people to be aware of what could happen. We need to be making our grid harder rather than making it smarter. And we need to try to protect it from terrorist attacks as well. So I guess I'll leave it at that for now. Put all your negative comments down below. Uh, my name is Craig with ForbiddenKnowledge.info, the radiation page, ForbiddenKnowledge.info. I go through this and show some of my proof. Uh, or the PrepperStop.com if you want to buy equipment or survival supplies, as you see behind me. Uh, thanks for watching. So long.